Welcome back to another episode of Ink Transfer Drawing with Mark Zimmerman. Brought to you by the Sanford Arts program here at the Sanford Cancer Clinic. Um, I'm just getting a nice, smooth, even layer of ink set out on this plexiglass. Then I'm going to drop a sheet of paper. Drop a sheet of paper on top of that. And I got a puppy who won't get out of my way here. <laughs> Come on. Her name is Cleo. Cleo likes to be involved. So she's decided to chew her bone while laying across my feet. So I'm going to tape this paper down so it doesn't move when I draw. I don't want to get smudges of that ink that I rolled out everywhere. That ink is inside a rectangle of tape and I can feel that tape. I can push this pen into that corner and drag it along that edge and then this edge and then this edge. That's where the ink is. That's where I need to do my drawing. I'm going to look at a little um, fence post just uh, for reference. And I'm going to draw it pretty big and pretty loose too. A little knot in it right here. So whatever I draw on the back of this, I'm drawing on the back of the paper, shows up on the front, shows up in reverse, of course. You'll notice that I don't set my hand down over here where there's ink, because that would the pressure of my hand would transfer the ink as well. A gnarly old fence post must be juniper. And of course it buries itself in the prairie grasses here. And there's a little sage too. Some of those prairie grasses are blowing in the wind here too. And we got a little sage down in here. A little sage over here. So I'm trying to draw that prairie wind and the way it stirs the grass. And the pup has decided she's not getting enough attention. She's going to claw my feet. So while I put sage in, if I yelp a little bit, it's because she has sharp claws. She lets us trim her toes, but that almost sharpens them more than anything else. Keeps them short, but keeps them sharp. She's kind of a dangerous little thing. Then I don't want to put uh, much up in here in terms of details. I I'm going to put a staple right here and run a strand of barbed wire over here, and then it slants down from that staple like that. So staple about right here. Strand of wire slants down. Staple ooh, down here maybe.
And then I'm going to put a put a horizon in up really high. Uh, and I'm going to cue it straight as can be. So I'm going to actually measure. Here's my prairie horizon and here's my ridge on the horizon. And I want to darken that ridge and that's kind of a detailed thing. I'm going to grab a little bridge so I can set my hand down rest it on something. And get in that little space. I said if I put my hand down, I would get a little bit of a little bit of tone there, a little little shadowy or something. And do the same thing down here. And I can peek and take this tape off and take a peek, see what I've got. Oh, huh. Can't have barbed wire without without some barbs. That was a close one. There we go. See what we got here. Yeah. Uh huh. I'm gonna just see if I can get a little extra dark right down in here, right down in here. Really press hard. Maybe I'll take one more peek. I think I'm gonna. I should put that tape back at the top, but the one on the bottom holds pretty good too. Okay, maybe just a little. And let's not even peek. I could always put it back down if I really wanted to. So I'm going to get the ink out of here. And there's our little fence post in the middle of nowhere. Get the ink out of here and that lets me splash a little watercolor on there. I'm going to slip a board in underneath it. So I can tell that I'm going to want to do some washes, and washes are easiest if you can tip the board one way or the other. Um, Light green, I'm mixing up over here. I'd use some green and some yellow ochre. I'm going to test it on a piece of scratch paper. It's going to work just fine. And I'm just going to tip this paper so gravity works to move the oops, works to move the paint downhill. In this case, from bottom to top, because I've got the bottom tipped up. I'm going to lighten that a little bit. And lighten it a little more. And lighter means water. So. Okay, I'm going to sneak just a teeny bit of blue in there. Make a cooler color. See if I can 
get that cooler color to look a little farther away. Cool colors tend to recede in space, so I'm using cool to create a transition from foreground to middle ground in this case. And I should mention that I'm just making this up as I go. I don't really have a plan here. But I have done this type of thing before. So now I'm adding water. Lightens the wash. Actually all it really does is let more of the more of the paint or more of the more of the paper rather show through. So again using gravity to let that kind of come down where I want it. I just snuck a little bit of yellow ochre in that blue too and so it made it a little greener and a little duller too. So greener and duller with a little yellow ochre. Yellow ochre is an earth tone. So. More water on it. Put a little sky in, but now I'm going to turn this because I want that sky to go from way too dark. <laughs> I'll rinse my brush completely. Fence post color here. It's old weathered wood. So I'm just using an indigo. And I have too much paint. So I dried my brush. I'm going to come back and pick some up. There we go. Fuss with it a little bit. I also want to paint that ridge. But I have wet paint above and below it, so we'll see if I can pull this off. Um, hey Cleo, how you doing? See how dark that is. Not very dark. Maybe let's try a little darker. That should work. So there's that indigo, the same color I used on the fence post. Kind of tie those things together a little bit. And then we title them. We'll call this Spring on the Plains. Sign it. Zimmerman, date it 
2020. And there is spring on the plains. And if you like it, it might be one of the in one of the ink transfer drawings in the stack of ink transfer drawings that are free for the taking. And if you like it, you can also watch the video of its creation. So, uh, hope you enjoyed watching. I had fun doing it. Until next time.